Good morning, welcome back. We're gonna put our last coat of rhino line on here. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna start tinkering around with some other things, getting stuff ready, and hopefully get to assembly, you know, this evening. Gonna work on getting our chain case back together here. It's pretty much, you know, just the opposite of what we did when we took it all apart. Bearings feel pretty good. You know, a guy could replace on those at this point. I'm not going to though, because that costs money. And, you know, it's a budget build. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, we welded on this chain case, so. I get that big gear down to the bottom. Looks like she slipped pretty good. And it landed in the teeth too, so we're good on that. It looks like I'm missing a washer for this one, so I'm gonna steal one off this chain case. Since it's just a spare. Got some fresh ones here. Some guys say that they have issues with this rubber, you know, flexing and whatnot. I don't know. You can put the white ones on too, but they're more expensive. And this is easy enough to switch. If we do have issues, we'll just throw a different pair on. Probably the hard plastic type. And put our bearings on here. This little lip here goes to the inside on both the rear shaft and the drive shaft. If you put it on backwards, it doesn't seal. Got some fresh bearings. They are sealed too. I'll leave the seal in. Seal will go to the back side. And you want this about flush, sitting like that. It's pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then, you know, we're gonna throw these back on. Once I get the little guys punched out of them, still gotta do that. I'm gonna take this, put her in the vise. I found a nice roll pin punch to use, I think. Uh, how do I wanna do this? I don't wanna smash the little spring tab down, so I'm gonna put it this way. I should keep that safe-ish. And what did I do with that? Here it is. Got this big roll pin punch I'm gonna put on there and beat that thing out after I heat it up good with the map gas. I could use the big torch too and I might, but I don't want to wreck it. Let me use this first. Let's see if that's enough to get her loose. Yep, it's going. There we go. That's our bushing, you know, for the rear sprocket holder thingy that goes on the track for your tensioner. Yeah, that's what that is. And they get stuck in there after, you know, 50 years. I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy, except this is the opposite direction. So we gotta swap her over. Map gas, that's some cool stuff. And then you don't have to get the torch and fiddle with all that. You just click the button. This is, this is some torching technique here. It's not going, it needs more heat. There. Slap some paint on those holders. So we gotta wait on that. We got some paint on our rhino sign. 
By the way, that's the name of the sled since it's rhino lion. Next up, we gotta work on this gas tank situation. Put some plugs in her, drop some lines, fuel return, all that fun stuff. So this here is a Kim Pex aftermarket Elan tank. Uh, they're made for like the newer Elan, so they're a little bit smaller than the 71 tanks. And they only have one port, so you don't really have a return line option. But, if you want to drill and have a drill bit, you can make it work. Or you know, you can put a Makuni on and be cool, but uh, not about the Makunis. It's an HR life around here. We're putting in these uh, fuel line 90 adapter things, rubber grommet, steel line. It needs to be about a half inch hole for it to work right, and so you can actually get it installed. So you gotta ream this one out a little bit. Something like that. That should work now pretty darn good. And I'm gonna drill another one right here, okay? Our right here got moved over a little bit. How's that looking? Pretty good. It'd help if I had a sharp drill bit. I don't own one of those. Something like that. That fits in there nice. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Simple. It's a little scary, you know, drilling in a hundred dollar tank, but skip a bar night and you'll have, you know, another tank, I guess. But check your chips, make sure there's, you know, nothing in there. Now that we got that hole drilled in there, so we got two in our new tank, we're gonna make our lines, our return line and our pickup line. Now, I'm gonna make the pickup line first. And you know, a guy doesn't want the lines to be the same length. Because if you do, when you get down here on a low tank, there's not that much fuel in there. And if your lines are sitting down there, you know, right next to each other, you're gonna circulate that fuel from the pickup line or from your return line to your pickup line. And when that happens, you get air bubbles in your pickup line and you know, you can run lean. Not ideal, not good. So I do my pickup line first, measure that out on the side kinda. I want her to be sucking off the bottom for sure. Probably something like this, I would guess. Double check here. That looks like a pretty healthy measurement. Okay. Use my scissors and you know, cut it. So I got my pickup line here. I got the valve pushed through there. And I got these little ears on these cheap clamps. I'm gonna cut those off. Safety squints when you do that, they fly everywhere. Okay. Now we're gonna slide this grommet up over the clamp. Once that's done, you just drop the pickup into the tank, push that grommet down, throw a filter on the end of it. For the return line, we had to hog it out a little bit, but once that was said and done, the lines fit perfect and the tank's ready to go. Well, that didn't go too bad at all. This little gal is down to a chassis and that's the way she's going to be until she gets turned into iron again. So that's, you know, kind of sad, but we got a lot of good parts out of it and we're going to keep another one going. So, you know, it takes one to build one, so, yeah. And as for the sprocketry in this, it was a 335 sprocketry. We were rocking a 34 tooth bottom with a, what the heck was it, 15 or 14 tooth top. Same as what we're putting in the 335 Elan. So there's no difference there, but I do have a good chain and a good couple sprockets to uh, save on and a good drum and a good, uh, you know, secondary. So that's good. Um, the chassis, the skis, they're out of here. Don't need those. But their boogies are really good. The track's going on the 335. That's in great shape too. And uh, we're going to save on that motor, of course. So we've got a spare. Other than that, you know, that pretty much breaks her down to nothing. The steering column, nah, that's the fancy.
up to your version. We might save on that too, but yeah. Still kind of sad to see her go, but it's okay. It served its purpose. Made it a long time. Yes, sir. So the trapper box is dry-ish, you know. And we gotta get a tail light installed before we get too carried away doing all the other fun stuff. I found, you know, some screws that are too short. I gotta go find some different ones. But my idea is, you know, just screw it through there and then bore a hole, you know, around the outside of it for our electricals to plug in. We're gonna have to do some, you know, pretty fine measuring to figure out where we gotta be, but I think we can do it. Check this out, the guy had a brainstorm. Here's our old bracket tree that's all busted up. Something like that. Now we know right where we gotta drill. Now I could get the jigsaw out and do a really good job, but as long as I stay in that square, nobody's gonna see it, because the light's gonna cover it. You know, other than you guys, but if I just do it real quick, you're not gonna say nothing. So. Perfect. Wow, that's a sharp drill bit. Look out. She's secured now. Yep, wow, that thing sticks out about a mile. Pretty schnazzy, if I do say so myself. So, it's time for assembly. I got that tail light put on the trapper box. We're gonna mark it out now. You know, put six bolts around here, or screws or whatever, into there to keep that secure. You know, maybe we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably. I don't know. Somewhere's around there. I don't want that box to fall off, that's for sure. This is when things get fun. Trying to get this, you know, drive cob on through there. It's gonna be interesting, like always. Trying to get that track above the secondary can be a little bit difficult, but a little bit of time and waggling, you'll get it. Bring a big stick along, shove it up in the track so it gets out of your face, and it doesn't go too bad. Trying to get that cog lined up in there can be pretty difficult as well. Normally it doesn't go too bad because we got one chain and one tensioner. So with this big horse, I got two tensioners on a double chain, so it's gonna take some finesse. And I need to find the plank. Oh, here we go. Truth be told, hindsight's always 2020, 20, and this cog kicked my butt. I spent a better part of an hour, you know, finagling it. I think the rhino line made my tolerances a little bit tighter on the cup and the secondary, but I had more issues than that. Eventually, I did get it slid in there, and I opened up a whole nother can of beans. So, back out it came. Okay, a guy struggled for 30 minutes when, you know, we found out our problem. That bearing, it slid on more. It's not supposed to do that. See this side? That's, you know, probably set factory. This side, not so much. So apparently the shafts wore out, which is a huge bummer because, you know, I put all my drill, there are my screws in there and my new cogs and, yep. That's, I'd say that's my problem. This, this is no buenos. There's supposed to be a lip here and apparently the bearing spun on it or it's just wore out or whatever. It's not sticking. It should stick right about there like this guy. See, that's a, that's a good one. It shouldn't, you know, do that. 
That's not good. A guy should have known better when he just tapped it on there, but I wasn't paying attention. So, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure if we look at the film, I probably just slid it right on. You know, this one, you know, there's a real important reason why I picked this one on all my drive cogs. It's because someone already drilled out all the rivets. So it's gonna be easier. That's the smoothest one I've ever done. But, you know, if it's a rear one, it's not that big of a deal. But these drive cogs, not good. And that's what you get for taking the easy path, I guess. Our workbench is getting rather cluttered, but I'm gonna measure this one, make sure it's about the same as that one. Then we'll try to take this one apart. If that one doesn't want to come apart, we'll take this one apart. If that one doesn't come apart, we'll go out to the, you know, salvage yard and find one that's gonna work. Let's drill these things out. This is fun time. See, that's how they should come off. They shouldn't just like slide off. Junk oil seals, throw those off. Slide this off. Slide this off. Um, I think I bent this one up, so probably use that other one on there. Not the double basket. No, I didn't this one. Yep, there we are. I'm set at 123. Looks pretty darn good. Looks like that seal's gonna ride nice. Let's go install this now, instead of, you know, dinking around. Round two ought to go better. Now we know we're sitting good. Here, you wanna see what's going on down here? I bet you do. Okay, so we got her, you know, in place where it's kind of supposed to go. Everything's looking, you know, good. But we gotta get these seals pushed in. And that's why I told you, you wanna keep that lip out. Well, that lip rides in a groove inside here and inside that side. So it goes, you know, the best is if a guy takes a screwdriver and just, you know, clean the junk off the end of it. And, you know, you just kind of work her in carefully without you know poking a hole in the dang thing because if you poke a hole in it you're gonna have to take it out and retry and pull the bearing and put a new seal in and whatever else this part is not very fun either it can be a real bugger sometimes it goes pretty good though the seal is seated and that lip everything is good now we just have to do that side now we're gonna install our uh, little clip here and our pin on this secondary. Thought it'd go real good. That's what I really didn't want to happen and it just happened. Well, here we are, you know, I'm about to pull the drive shaft for a third time tonight. Things are just going, you know, swell, you could say. I dropped that cotter key right down in the chain case, and with that double chain in there, you can't get anything down there to get it out. And not only that, I can't see it in there. So, I'm gonna, you know, loosen this side, the cup over, and try to, you know, slide that. It's probably not going to go very good because, you know, a guy did put the seal in there, but we're going to try that, try to lift that second sprocket up a little bit and then scoop that pin out, put everything back and, you know, get back on track because I was hoping to be done with this thing about two hours ago, but that's not going to happen. Special there. This train's back on tracks. 
Let's get this show on the road. We're gonna install the rear cog later now. This ought to go good, right? It goes like the rest of the day has been. It's gonna go just peachy. There. I think I put the uh, these two dickers in backwards. Actually, I know I did. They're supposed to be on the top. Yep. Dang it! If you're gonna double check, make sure it's the way it's supposed to be, so I don't put it in backwards again. Yes, sir. That's how it's supposed to be. Here. I'm going to smear it on here and stick it back in so it's good for this year's ride. Something like that. Now we're going to carefully re slide her in there. You notice that it goes in by hand dang here. Give her a couple taps. Finish the seating, and there. That's gonna help you know expand the lifespan a little bit. It's gonna keep things lubricated, of course. And I don't know what else it's gonna do. Help the suspension travel. Ugh. We got her. Barely, look at that bendage. I'm gonna find a new one for this. Do that at your own risk, by the way. You know, the whole impacting thing. There's a good chance you might just snap that bolt off or strip your threads out. But I have enough spare parts. I'm not too concerned about that. So part two is coming up next, and we'll see you there, I guess. Should we go?